Shalom, shalom. I want to get all praises through the spirit and power of Yah Bashem Yahweh Shai. Call Halal Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Right? You know, uh, just the SOG right now, um, currently in Louisville. Currently in Louisville doing the work, man. Um, bringing out the scriptures, bringing out book, chapter, and verse. Um, we got the uh, just a banner right now with the uh, with the Lashawan, right? The Lashawan. We got some literature, flyers, Bible. We got the Lashawan, right? So we we got the we got the uh, we got the brew. We got the uh, we got the Torah. We got the Hebrew, right? Uh, and we got the English. You know, if, for the for the scoffers or whatever it is that people are trying to do, right? But um, we here to call out peace and preach peace. So let me get this scripture real quick, in Jeremiah. Get Jer uh, Jeremiah, I think it's 29. Right? This is Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 4. Right? I got my crown open. This is Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away. From Jerusalem unto Babylon. So we're in this captivity. So in this captivity, it's up for us to do the work. And do the, the prophets even finna tell you what that work is, man. Look at what it says here. It says, Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them. That's a charge. It says, Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take wives and begot sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, and that you might be increased and not diminished. You see what I'm saying? So the Bible is saying, and even in the land of your captivity, you could be blessed in your captivity, saying you can plant houses, right? We're dealing with economics. Increase by with your seed and raise your seed up to do good things like by taking a wife. Right? That you might be increased there. Where where are you being increased? You've been increased in Babylon. You've been increased in the land of your captivity. For what reason? Verse 7. Jeremiah 29 and 7. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused whether I have caused you to be carried away captives. Right? So you peek, you seek the peace of the city to where you're caused to be carried away captives, right? And that's by way of Yahweh uh, Shah, right? That's how you seek the peace and, and become that peace by way of Yahweh Shah now, right? Look at what it says. It says, for in peace, therefore, you shall have peace, Right? For thus saith the Lord of hosts. Why Yahweh Shai? Right? So, in the peace thereof, you're going to have peace because you ain't doing nothing but preaching the laws, statutes, and commandments. You walking out of the command, you walking by the commandments, and that's a light. Let's 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 just get that though. Uh, I think that's uh it's a lot there. Psalms. 16, 19, I believe. Let me see. Let me get Psalms real quick. 19, 16. Could be, I think it's Proverbs. So like it. It's Proverbs chapter uh, 19, verse 16. He that keep the commandment, keep his soul. 
but he that despise his ways shall die. You see what I'm saying? So if you keep in the commandments, you keep in your soul. And if you keep in your soul, you walking in the fruit of that nature. Let's prove that. Right? Let's get the fruit. Right? Let's get Galatians chapter 5. Um, verse 14. Start there. It says, fulfill. It says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. What does it mean for all the law to be fulfilled in one word? Look at what it says here. Right? Thou shalt love your brother as yourself. How do you love your brother as yourself? It's dealing with a fruit. It's dealing with walking with a fruit. Uh, if you love your brother, first and foremost, if you love your brother as you love yourself, you won't shake your brother to where you cause him to stumble. Neither will are you going to stumble. Right? Let's prove that. A righteous man falls seven times. Yeah, but that's only for so long. Hold on. Let me get that. Let's prove that. Right? First John chapter 2, verse 10. Look at what it says here. It said, He that love his brother abide in the light. Right? So if you if you love your brother, you abide in the light. Imagine what being in the light is. When you're in the light, you're not in darkness. Right? So being in the light is also an attribute. Being being in the light is a characteristic. Being in the light is a fruit. Being in the light is 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 is, is a nature you live by. It's it's called being born again, right? First John chapter two verse ten. He that love his brother abide in the light, and there's no occasion of stumbling in him. You see that? So if you abide in the light, you're not gonna stumble because you can see. And you, by you being able to see, you can make better decisions by being in the light because that's a characteristic. It's a it's, it's a heart posture, right? Let's read about the heart posture. Let's get back to uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. For all of the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Love your brother as thyself. So only way you can love your brother as yourself if you abide in the light right you have to abide in the light let's prove that that the only way you can love your brother truly is if you're abiding in the light let's see that because abiding in the light is a certain fellowship man right abiding in the light is a certain practice it's a certain thing that you live by you just can't say oh i'm abiding in the light right because it's a fruit you know people by their fruit so let's look at the light of the fruit and see what and see what it, what it looks like to abide in the light and if you can love your brother any other by any other way right there's no way to love but way by but by while you our shot right so let's 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 get that let's go to first john look at what it says here we're going to go to first john chapter uh uh we're going to go to first john chapter one first verse 5 man first John chapter 1 verse 5 because uh, we got to remember it's about keeping the commandments and the faith of uh, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, which is Christ you got to keep the commandments so look at what it says first John chapter 1 verse 5 look at what it says here this is the, this it says this then is the message which you have heard of him and declare unto you so this is the message that you have heard of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot? This is the message, right? It's coming out of sin. It's, it's it's understanding what that right fellowship is, right? Look at what it says here. It says, uh, Salakia. It says, This is it says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all, right. Now, we just read in 1 John chapter 2 and 10, right, that if you abide in the light, there's no stumbling in you. There's no occasion of stumbling. We also just read that you, the, the, how, you for, it's, it's how you fulfill the law in one is loving your brother as you love yourself. So now we're substantiating on what it looks like 
and the operation thereof to love your brother as you love yourself and how to walk in that light, man. And how to walk in that nature, right? That's what we substantiate and that's what we're dealing with because this is all dealing with Christ being our sacrifice, Christ being the sacrifice of the new covenant and, and what it looks like to walk in the new covenant in order of operation. That's what we're dealing with right now, right? So this is 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. I'll start again recap and we're going to continue reading it says this is it says this then is the message which you have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all so there's no darkness at all right there's no darkness at all in you if you follow the most high god you know what i mean if you, if you don't follow the most high god you're gonna be in darkness christ didn't die for people to continue to sin that's the Antichrist. You're the goddamn devil if you do that. When Christ died for us for you to elevate your mind into higher consciousness and stop sinning. That's why Christ died. He didn't die so you could keep sinning. He died so you can stop sinning. Right? And for no and this is the message which you have heard of him from the beginning. Repent or die. Be born again. Transform your mind. Right? Look. It says, in declaring to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. There's no darkness. We finna see though. We finna see with this darkness and how that differentiate you from being in the most high God. Look at what it says here. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Right? So if you say, hey man, I got fellowship with God, man. Yeah, I know Jesus. But you walk in darkness, you walk in folly, you're a liar, you're a slanderer, you lie and you do not the truth. The truth is the commandments of the Most High God and the faith of Yahweh Shah. That's what the truth is, man. And honestly, if you don't walk in that truth, you won't have salvation, you won't be saved. So we got to walk in that truth. So I'll read it again. This is uh, 1 John. This is 1 John chapter uh, 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light, so like it. If we say that we have fellowship with him, which is Christ, so if you say you believe in Christ and walk in darkness, you lie and do not the truth. So the Bible is saying if you say you believe in Jesus and you don't do what Jesus said, you're a liar. You don't do the truth. We're lying to ourselves. So this is why we got to walk in the fruits of the spirit. This is why we got to start coming back to the commandments of God, knowing that we are the children of Israel, right? Keeping the laws and commandments and the faith of Christ. Walking in love, coming back to the table, right? It, it, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's, it's a big differentiation of understanding what darkness is and what light is and knowing already that, hey, you know what? You, like, you, it's fair game people will say this. All right, well, look, man, I believe in Christ. I just struggle with these things. Well, that's darkness, right? We got to be able to differentiate what that darkness is and just stop doing it. Okay, yeah, you stumble, right? So you stumbling, you're a baby, but we got to come out of that. This is why the Bible says, gather together, O nation, not desire. You're not desired of to come out of your sins, man. Ain't nobody desiring that out of you, of you, man. Come back, come together. Ain't nobody desiring of you to be uh, sought, sought out there by any goddamn body, man. Don't nobody care. So we got to come back, man. We got to come together. We got to keep this word. And we got to stay out of the darkness and come to the light. Right? That's what we got to come to, man. We got to come to the light out here. So look, man. Uh, second, first, first John chapter 2. Right? Verse verse, verse 4. It says... Um, so like it. Let me um start at uh actually I'm supposed to be at first John chapter one, but let me get this real quick. It says uh this this is in the spirit, first John chapter two, verse three. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So it's not that oh I just believe, but you also have to keep the commandments of the most high God. It's first John chapter two and three. If we keep his commandments, he that saith if I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So the truth is not even in you 
if you don't keep the commandments, say and say you know the Most High God. How is the commandments written in you if you say you if, if you don't keep the commandments? But you saying, yeah, I believe in Jesus. That's a lie, man. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And that's why the Most High has called people out to preach the new covenant and come out and dispel madness, man, and wickedness. It's just really that simple, man. The Most High has come out to dispel that and, and bring this truth out. Verse 3 again. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep the commandments. And, and, and so like that. He that say, I know him. So one that say, man, I know the Most High God, man. I know him. All right, cool. And keep if not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. A command, One commandment is not lying. Another commandment is not stealing. Another commandment is that we shouldn't be fornicators. Another commandment is not lusting. You know what I mean? All these various things. Another commandment is being a, a, a man and raising up your household and not forsaking the women. Another commandment is a woman being dressed and adorned and modest apparel. You see what I'm saying? So there is no saying we believe in Christ and we got all this love for God and these things, but we're breaking the commandments and not having the faith of Christ. Right? Verse verse uh verse verse five. But those who so keep his word in him truly is the love of God perfected. Proving what? Christ died so you could be perfect. Right? Christ died so you could come out of transgression. So we can come out of sin. Right? That's why Christ died. Right? That's why he died. We got that. That's in the Bible. The book of Hebrews tells us, you know, I'm just foreshadowing it, that um, he died to purge the consciousness of our, uh, the evilness of our thoughts so we can walk in a better light, so we can walk in a better way, man, inside of Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 10, right? It says, but he, uh, 1 John 2 and 5, but whoso keep his word in him truly is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that, so like it, hereby know we that we are in him. So this is how we know that we are in him, because we keep in the commandments, the faith of Christ, and we're perfected through him, man. Right? That's what the that's the whole point of Christ um, dying for us, man. Right? First John chapter 2 and 9. He that say he is in the light and hate his brother is in darkness even until now so you can't say you love god but you still hate you, you you're hating people over in your family man right you can't say you love god if you hate people in your family you can't say you love god if you hate your brother you still got you you can't be the bigger person right you still out here running the muck starting divisions right it, with evil intentions, right? You don't love your brother, right? Let's read that again. First John chapter two, verse nine. He that say he is in the light and hate his brother is in darkness even until now. You deceive yourself, man. You see that? You're deceiving yourself. You said that, hey, I'm in the light. I'm in the light. But you, if you're in the light, then why are you still hating? You can't have darkness and you can't have light. You can't mix them together and say, hey, I'm in a light. Right? You have to be balanced in light. Right? Not being balanced just in light and darkness. He that love his brother abides in the light. So the Bible is saying if you love your brother, you abide in the light. Now we get into furthermore what it's looking like to love your brother. Let's read it again. First John chapter two, verse 10. He that love his brother abides in the light and there's no occasion of stumbling in him. So there's no stumbling in somebody that loves their brother because they're going to treat him according to Christ, which is keeping the commandments and the faith of Christ. Right. That's how we know if we have the love of God, because there's going to be no stumbling in you. Because you're working on character quality. You're going through the commandments. You're going through the washing of the word. 
character quality, right? But he that hate his brother is in darkness and walk in darkness. If you hate, you walk in darkness. You can you. The Bible is saying you can't even love and, and, and love the right way the with, uh, the way you need to. You want to know why? Because you're walking in darkness. Walking in darkness is performing evil, man. Right? I thought right, I shot. Right? I thought I shot right. You perform evil works, man. Look at what it says. Read that again, man. Right? First John chapter two. Verse, uh, verse, uh, where was that? Verse nine. He that is in the light and hate his brothers in darkness even until now. But he that hate his brothers in darkness and walk in darkness. So if you hate your brother, you're going to walk in darkness. You're not going to be in the light. You're going to be in darkness. Right? And know if not whether... He go because that darkness have blinded his eyes. You don't know what the hell you're doing, man, if you hate your people and you hate your brother and you hate anybody for that matter. You're supposed to be walking in love. You don't know where you're going. The darkness has blinded you. You have been deceived by your own thought patterns and not the ways of the Most High God that you must follow. Right? You say my word won't depart from your from my, uh, from your mouth, man. These words, these these they won't depart, right? Let's get that real quick. This is uh, this is Joshua chapter one and eight. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. So how do you have good success? By keeping the commandments of the Most High God. By meditating on what's right, which is the good and not the evil. Right? Right? That's how we have a good rapport with the Most High God. Right? 1 John chapter 2. Verse, uh, let me slide here. Let me get this again. 1 first, first John chapter 2. Verse, let me start at 10. He that loveth his brother abide in the light, and there's no occasion of stumbling in him. That's that good success. When you love your brother and abide in the light, and there's no occasion of stumbling in you. That's that good success we just read in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let's read that again. This is the book of the law, right? So the book of the law is the commandments of God, right? Look at what it says. It says, but thou shalt meditate therein. So you're going to meditate on the laws of God day and night that you may observe to do all according that's written therein. So, if you love the Most High God, if you if, if you truly love God, you're going to keep the commandments of the Most High God, and you're going to meditate on His law day and night. That's how you have good success, man. Right? That's how you have good success. That's how we obtain good success. Right? Look at what it says here. 1 John chapter 2, verse 11. But he that hate his brother is in darkness and walk in darkness. You're going to perform that. You, there is no good success. It says, and know if not whether he go. You want to know why you don't know where you go? Because you don't have good success. It's not a, it's, it's not a proper, it's prosperous thing not knowing where you're going, being torn from here to there, to and fro, man. Right? It says, and know if not whether he go, because the darkness have blinded his eyes, man. The darkness is out here blinding the eyes of the people, blinding the eyes of the men, 
It's blinding the eyes of the children and their whole damn house. With, and we're seeing that in our communities. We're seeing that it's not good success. We're seeing that in our houses. We're seeing it on the workforce. We're seeing it in the damn earth. There's no good success in the earth because the earth is lacking the law, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Christ, which is going to be a, a world takeover. Christ is going to come down here and establish his law. Right? 1 John 2 and 12. 12. That says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. Uh, for, it says, forgiving you of his name's sake, man. So if you keep the commandments of God and the faith of Christ, you'll be forgiven. Right? That's what it's about. It's about keeping the commandments and the faith of Christ, bro. So, man, you know we got to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ, bro. You know? Elevate our conscious mind out here. That's how we get out of this captivity, man. Consciously. Then you get out of it physically. You the children of Israel. You got to keep them commandments, man. That's why That's why the Most High got me out here right now to preach the word, to get the sheep in, for it can be condemnation to the people that reject the word. That, you, you, you only got two options. You go get down and you go lay down, right? First John chapter 2 and 13. I write unto you fathers because I like it. Now, let me, uh, I think that's it on that. Now, let me get 1 John 2 and 18, right? Let me start at 17. It says, and the world pass away and the lust thereof. The, the world is going to pass and the lust thereof because the wicked is going to be punished, right? But he that do the will of God abide forever. So if you do the will of the Most High God, you're going to abide forever. You know what the will of the Most High God is? The will of the Most High God is keeping the commandments and the faith of Christ. If you if you don't do the will of God, you abide in lust, and lust is going to be destroyed. And if you operate in any other spirit than Christ, you're going to get destroyed. Right? That's prophecy. Let's read that again. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. And the world pass away. The world is going to pass away. Are you in the world, yes or no? Right? I, I, I'm looking at people in the world right now. People are in the world. I'm in the world. Let's see what's going to pass away with the world. And the lust thereof. So the world is going to pass away. People are going to die in it. And so is the lust with the world and the people that, that are in the world. Right? That's what First John chapter 12, uh, 2 and 17 is saying. But he that do but... Excuse me. Right? First John chapter 2 and uh, uh, 17. But he that do the will of God abide forever. So if you do the will of the most high God, you're gonna live for you're gonna abide forever. You, you know you know what that's called? That's called immortality. That's called hey, I I, I believe in Christ. That's called hey, I'm gonna walk with the sacrifice of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's what that's called, right? You're, you're going to abide forever, right? I, I, immortality. The sacrifice of Yah, Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Walking according to the new covenant. Walking according to the fruits of the spirit, right? Now let's get that. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 5. That's what we got to understand, man. That's why uh, the Most High raised up leaders. That's why he raised up people so they could come out here and teach the word of God, right? Because the word of God got to be preached to the sheep and to who? The lost sheep. The lost sheep is the children of Israel, man. The lost sheep is not just to the children of Israel, but even the Gentiles that hear the word of the Most High God. Just keep the commandments, keep the faith of Christ, or get destroyed. Right? If it, it says if your arm causes you to sin, cut it off. It, it, it's rather that than go in the lake than your whole body go in the lake. Right? So 
Galatians chapter 5. Right? Galatians chapter 5 and 4. Christ has become Salakia. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Let's start at 14. Again, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. So you're going to love your neighbor as yourself because you're going to treat your brother in such a way that you're going to treat Christ and that Christ treated the church. Okay? The church just wasn't women. The church is the body. That's how we're going to treat one another because that's who your brethren is. Right? What did Christ say? We're going to get that breakdown though. Right? We're going to get into that. First John chapter, uh, so like it, Galatians chapter 5 and uh, 15. But if you bite and devour one another, if you continue to wrath at each other, if you continue to sin towards one another, because that's what we're doing out here, man. We're not keeping the commandments of the Most High God. We're not keeping the faith. We're devouring one another, right? And, and, and there's a death penalty for that. But if we operate in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, there's redemption for that. Right? Let's get it. Galatians chapter 5. Right? So I did. Galatians 5 and uh, 5 15. But if you devour one another, Take heed that you be not consumed of one another. Because you'll be consumed, man, if you got hatred towards one another, man. Cigarette? Keep the commandments, bro. You got to repent and keep the commandments, man. You got to stop smoking cigarettes. Or the most I go destroy you, man. You know, that's in the Bible, bro. You know, you got to keep the commandments. Yeah, bro. You got to keep the commandments of most High God and the faith of Christ. Or the most high go destroy us. That's that's what we don't understand, man. We gotta understand. We gotta put down the hatred. We gotta put down the cigarettes. Right? Stop getting high or drunk at our damn mass. Put down the tobacco that's killing our bodies. And start loving one another. It's, it's, it it messes with your brain cells. That's scientifically proven. Right? No, I don't have a cigarette. Right? I don't have one. I don't smoke it. I don't. I don't ever plan on putting tobacco back in my body again, right? So this is Galatians chapter uh, again five, verse fifteen. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed of one another. Verse sixteen. This I say then: walk in the spirit, right? Right. Yalak Baha Warach. What that mean? That mean walk in the spirit of the Most High God. Right? That's what we're supposed to be doing as the elect. We know we're the children of Israel. We got to believe and walk in the spirit. I know we got to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. And if not, go get destroyed. Because that's the judge. And that's why the Most High sent us out here. Yeah, we got to stop smoking them too. Or get destroyed by the Most High God. You got two options. You go get down or you go lay down. Right? Because the Most High God ain't playing with nobody. You can say shut the F up all you want. The Most High God don't care about that. Right? Spare not. Right? Lift your voice up as a trumpet. Let's get that. Right? got to be the spoke person of the most high God. This is uh, Isaiah uh, 50, 58 verse 1. Man. 
So Isaiah 58 verse 1 says, cry aloud. So the Bible is telling the prophets of the Most High God to come outside and cry aloud, saying, hey, you sinners, stop sinning or God's going to kill you, right? Spare not. So we don't care about nobody's feelings. We don't give a damn about what man has to say. We don't care who agrees, right? I mean, I mean, we don't care who disagrees. We care who agrees. We don't care who disagrees. We don't care about any of that. Lift up your voice as a trumpet. That means project your voice. Bring out and bring up the, the, the vibrations of your voice, right? And, 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 and do what? Why is God saying lift up your, why is God saying this? Cry aloud. Why is God saying cry aloud? Why is he saying spare not? Because people are in their emotions. People don't want to stop sinning. It says, and show my people their transgressions. The Bible is saying, if you're in sin, you're going to die or repent. Start loving your people. Start, uh, start loving yourself, man. Come together. We're the children of Israel. Man. Right? It's time to repent. It's time to put down the folly. It's time to put down the wrongdoing. It's time to start loving each other. That's, that, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be loving each other, not gossiping about each other. Not hoping we die. I don't want to see that mother effer no more over petty. Nah, man, we're supposed to be coming together as people, not kicking people out. Say, get out of my house, you can't be over here no more. Nah, that ain't 70 times seven. Where they do that at? The world. That's not 70 times seven. So for no other reason, the most I send these people out here to cry out loud, to gather his sheep, because you don't know who go here. You don't know who walking by us go hear the, hear the word. You don't know who saying later on, man, you know what? I needed that, man. I needed to hear that brother out there doing that, man. That's why, I'm, that's why some told me to go over there that way. You know what I mean? You don't know. You just I, you just be used by the most high God that come out here for him, man. And nothing short of that. So for uh, uh, Isaiah 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Right? The house of Jacob they sin. So the people of God has to know what God is preferring them to do and what God don't want them to do. And then, as a brother, you know what you're going to do? You're going to rebuke. You're going to show love by showing the commandments of God because that's what love is. Right? The Love is having the commandments of God and teaching that. Let's prove that. Right? Let's prove what the love of God is. Because a lot of people say, I believe in God. Yeah, what's the, what does the Bible say the love of God is? Faith? No. Doing with doing the hell, doing whatever it is that you want to do. That's not the love of God, man. Right? Let, let's read and see what the love of God is according to the Bible. First John chapter uh one, right? First John five and three, Salakia. For the love of for this is the love of God. So we want to know what the love of God is, right? Well, this is the love of God, right? That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. In other words, the love of God is that we follow what God says and what God says is not hard to follow. Right? What, 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 what a lot of people don't want to do is we don't want to fight back. We don't want to get in the Psalms. We don't want to meditate day and night. We don't want the devil to depart from us because we're in the flesh. But is that a reason to sin? No, you can beat that, man. That's why you got to fight. That's why we got to operate by the fruits of the spirit. That's why we got to start loving each other so we can operate in what the love of God is, man. Let's read that again. First John chapter five, verse three. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. 
You know what I mean? It's just that simple. The Most High God commandments ain't hard to keep. <laughs> the, the Most High God commandments ain't hard to do, man. Right? That, so, so that's the love of God, that we keep His commandments, man. If we if we don't keep the commandments of the Most High God, the Most High God is going to destroy you. You're going to get destroyed if you don't keep the faith of Christ and the commandments of God. You got two options: you go get down or you go lay down. Right? It, it ain't no in between. Right? There there is no in between. Right? You, this ain't the best of both worlds. Right? This ain't Charlie in the truck zone in the room. Right? This ain't your favorite anime, man. This is the Bible. This is the most high God, man. Let's get let's get the hard copy. Right? We got that too. Right? We got that too, man. But we 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 we, we gotta come to the most high God with a right heart. Right soul, contrary heart, man. Right. Let me get the get the hard copy on them. Hard copy on them, boy. You know what I mean? So, uh, Romans. Let's go to Romans, man. Romans, one of my favorite chapters, because this cuts, and we go get back to Galatians. But we got to go to Romans because a lot of people believe that because they believe in Jesus, he, he died, that they could do anything they want. A lot of people outside tonight acting a damn fool on the behalf of they believe in Christ died for that. Christ ain't died for that, man. Christ died for you to keep your silly ass in the house at a decent hour. Respecting the Most High God, keeping the commandments, and the faith of Christ. Right? That's why Christ died. He ain't Christ. He ain't died for you to come out here and be acting a damn fool. And nothing short of that. So let's get uh, let's get third. Let's get Romans chapter eight, verse six. This is Romans chapter eight, verse six. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Right? So, are we going to continue to sin that grace abounds? Are we going to continue to sin that Christ died for? No, look, a lot of people think Christ died for them. To come party the crazy music. To continue to commit adultery. A lot of people think Christ died for that, man. Christ didn't die for that. Christ died for you to be covered up, being modest a pearl, not a liar, not a not not a, a scoffer, and any of that, man. Look at that, man. Look at that, man. That's what they do out here, man. See what I mean? That's what they do. You come lining up when that word coming out. Right? But Christ didn't die for that, man. Christ didn't die for people to be in continued of being sin, man. Christ died. Christ didn't die for you to be out here shaking your ass. Uh 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 doing whatever the hell you want to do. Christ died for you to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Christ. I mean, you only got two options. You go get down with the Most High God in this Christ, or you go die. You're going to get put to death. You're going to wake up to everlasting darkness if you don't do what God says. That's why the Most High God put me out here tonight for you to hear that. And for no other reason. Right? Right? That's why the Most High God put me out here tonight, man. And nothing, and nothing short of that. So we can hear the Word of God. And, and, and what the judgments are right so let's get Romans 6 and 1 again what shall we say then? so what shall we say that we know that Christ has died for us right what you gonna say what shall we say let's read shall we continue in sin 
<clears throat> that grace may abound. That's what the Bible's asking. That's what the most I got. Are we going to continue in saying that <coughs> Salakia, Jesus died for us? Right? Yeah, how would die for us? Are we going to continue in saying La'a? Absolutely not. Right? Why would we continue? As we go continue in seeing that Christ died for us, absolutely not. That's what the Bible says. Let's get that. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace abound? God forbid. That means no. No, you're not. No, we're not. Us true believers, we're not going to continue in sin that grace abounds. We're going to follow the Lord. We're going to keep the commandments. When it gets hard, we're going to call each other up. We're not going to forsake the brotherhood, right? Let's get that. Right? We ain't going to do that, man. We're going to keep we going to keep the charges over here, man. Right? And this body. And this body, man, we go we go keep them charges. We going to keep that faith right we go we go we go keep we go keep the brotherhood this is uh hebrews i'll get back to romans in a minute this is hebrews chapter 10 man look at what it says here uh hebrews chapter uh 10 verse 19 having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest of hosts by the blood of jesus ain't no cowards right by a new and living way which he have consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having a high priest over the household of God let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith right having our hearts sprinkled from an evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the profession of faith without wavering and let us consider one another and provoke each other unto love and unto good works. Right? That's how you that's how you stay solidified in the most high God, man. You you gather together. Right? You gather together, you you stop sinning, you stop being a lower self. You stop making excuses of why you're not serving the most high God, or get destroyed. You got two options: follow God, keep the commandments, or get destroyed. Get down or lay down. Listen to God or get destroyed. Get down or lay down. It don't matter if you believe. Just because you don't believe don't mean the prophecies in the Bible ain't gonna happen. Hey. Right? Come converse, man. Come hear what you gotta do, man. Come converse for a second. Come hear the word real quick, man. Y'all got enough time. God dang it. Right? How you doing, man? How you doing, man? My name's Shabar, man. How you doing? How you doing? You know what the love of God is? No, that's good. All right. Let me ask your buddies. So, man, do y'all know what the love of God is? That's right. I think so. What you think the love of God is? Dying on the cross. Yeah. I don't know what the love of God is. What you think it is? Dying on the cross. What they look like? But like how do you exhibit somebody dying on the cross for you? By getting whipped, stoned, have the cross carried on their back all the way up, pinned up. Get okay. Let me gotcha. we'll tell you how it is. None of that's in the Bible. So this is First John chapter one, verse five and three. For this is the love of God. So this is telling you what the love of God is that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous in other words they're not hard to do that's that that's that's what the command that's what the love of god is that that you keep the commandments. you know what the commandments are i don't know i don't know i don't know, I don't know. Right? yeah i don't know i'm talking about yeah, you know. start there you know what i mean you start just with keeping commandments the the, the, the through, through the most high god and the faith of christ having the faith of christ is how you keep the commandments you can't do that integrity, you change your way, you change your mind. That's the gospel. Yeah, man. That's it. Hey, let me give y'all one of these flyers, man. Y'all can do whatever, man. 
of my information over here. That's the love of God, though. It's keeping the commandments and the faith in Christ. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Yeah. That's what the that's what the uh, love of God is, man. Converting your mind to that perfection, right? Following Christ. You believe in Christ? Yes, I do. Let's talk about it real quick. You got a little bit of time to hear the hear the word? Uh, yes, sir. But I'm gonna go down here. And Alright, make haste to keep the commandments now. That's what the Bible says. It says make haste. See what I'm saying? See how them guys came up? No problem. My people out here bugged out, man. Romans chapter uh six. Right? Romans chapter six, verse two. God forbid, how shall we that's dead to sin live any longer therein? Right? We're supposed to be dead to sin through the spirit of power of the Most High God. So if you're dead to sin, how are you living any longer therein? How are you stumbling? How are you falling? You're dead to sin. You're dead to it. Meaning it doesn't exist. It's dead. It's gone. It's deceased. It decayed. It's not there anymore. It's, it was a bleep. It's gone. Right? Right? So, 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 so the Bible, see, see, this is why this is the most powerfulest book and the powerfulest weapon, tool in the whole entire earth, man. Alone. 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 Right? Romans 6, in, in one, chapter 1, verse 2 again. God forbid, how shall we that's, that are dead to sin? So the Bible suggests that you could be dead to sin live any longer therein. Meaning what? You're not gonna live any longer therein because you're dead to the sin. So you're not gonna sin. Sin won't be imputed because you're dead to it. Right? I think, question is this. How can you live after something you're dead to? If the old man is dead, how can you live after somebody that's dead? You know what I mean? Like, how can you basically, how is the old man basically at work in you if, if it's dead? If the affections of, of, of the flesh is dead, you're not going to do the affections of the flesh, right? If you walk in accordance to the fruits of the spirit, are you going to perform the affections of the flesh? Absolutely not. Because the Bible says you, you'll die if you do that, right? Romans 6 and uh, 3. Did you not know that so many of us that was baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death? What does it mean to be baptized into the death of Christ? It, 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 it means you coming out of sin. It means, it, it means that you decided to put down sin and not sin anymore. Look, let's read it again. Romans 6 and 3. Did you not know that so many of us that was baptized into the death, to Jesus Christ, was baptized into his death? That's a question. Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism unto death. So you're buried with Christ by his baptism. What does that mean? Like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we walk in the newness of life. You walking in that newness of life is putting down the old life. The old life comes with sin, right? That, that, that old life comes with transgression, man. <laughs> right? That old, that, that, that old life comes with being a damn idiot. That's what that old life comes with, man. That, that old life comes that you go, go to sleep and wake up to everlasting darkness because you don't love the Most High God and you hate yourself. Right? That's why it's time to keep the commandments of God, the faith of Christ, and we won't hate ourselves. We won't be depressed. You won't. You ain't gonna want to take yourself out, man. You ain't gonna be crying every time somebody die. You gotta throw up an R.I.P. Right? 
None of those things are going to be going on because you love yourself and you're still the power of the most high God. Because you keep the integrity and commandments of the most high God, man. Right? And hey, let's get that. Let me get this. Let's skip to 6. Romans 6 and 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That moving forward, we shall not serve sin. So the Bible is suggesting that you had an old life. You could get a new life. And moving forward from the new life, you don't have to serve sin. So the Bible is suggesting you can put sin down, right? The Bible is suggesting, hey, you can stop being weak. You can stop making excuses. I'm in the flesh. God ain't make me perfect. Well, Christ died so you can be perfect. That's why Christ died. And if you say you believe in Christ and don't walk towards that perfection, you make Christ a liar. And quite frankly, you are damn liar. Right? All with the A's and O's. I mean, yeah, that's cool. But that ain't saving nobody, man. That's not healing the households. We come out here for worldly pleasure. We come out here for worldly lust. But what about being healed in the minds, man? What about keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Christ? What about that? What, what's, what's the love of God? Everybody say, I love God. I love God. Oh, God, I love you. What's the love of God? What is it? Do anybody know what the love of God is? Nobody know? Don't nobody know what the love of God is? Why? You, 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 you drunk out your damn mind, man. Of course you don't know what the love of God is because you out here drunk out your damn mind. God ain't drunk out his damn mind. He's actually sober-minded. Right? Bert, bro, bro. Let, let's get an analogy. This analogy ain't hard. Right? Romans 6 and 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Right? So if you're dead, you're freed from sin. Alright? Sin ain't even imputed on a dead court. It can't. It's not sinning. It's a, it's a court. <laughs> right? Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe we should live with him. So if we're dead with Christ, we're going to live with Christ. And if you live with Christ, when you have your act together, I would imagine if anybody was roommates with the Messiah, the Hamashiach, you would have your act together. They, or you would have what they call your sugar, honey, iced tea together. Let's read that again. Romans chapter 6, verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him, right? So if we're living with Christ, what does it look like to live with the Messiah? Paint that in your mind. Just think about it. Like, dang, what it, what, what that look like? What it, what it look like to live with Christ? Right? <laughs> Romans 6 and 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, die no more, death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lived, he lived unto God. So if God is so so if we're living with Christ, and Christ is living to unto God, then what shall we be doing? Right? Is Christ double-minded? Is Christ a sinner? So what should we be? Let's read. Right? We got our whole lives to read the Bible. This. Let's read. Let's get knowledge. Let's get understanding. This is Romans chapter uh, 6, verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the Bible is saying to be dead unto sin, man. <laughs> right? The, the Bible is literally saying stop sinning. 
The Bible is saying, be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ your Lord. Hey, you, you believe in the Bible? Let's talk about the Bible real quick. Just give me five minutes. Might change your life. I'm pretty sure you got five minutes to spare. You got five minutes. This, 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 we, this might be our last night, Sire. We got five minutes. Come converse. And just take a step. It's about the good news of Christ, right? That the Bible is saying we can stop sinning. We can put we can actually put sin down. That's why Christ died. Christ didn't die. That we continually say, oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe. No, believing in Jesus, right, is following after him. And that's putting down sin. That's opening up your third eye to your Christ consciousness nature, your, your higher state, your higher mind, your higher being. Putting sin down, keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. That's how you believe in Christ. That's what keeping the commandments is. Keeping the faith of Christ and the commandments of God is how you substantiate you believe in God. Right? By doing what he says. Right? That's how that's how we substantiate that magnitude. Just by doing what the most high God says. It's not that you never done anything wrong, it's that you learn what to do through the commandments, what's right, what's wrong, and you just turn down the evil ways. Right? You put that wickedness down. You put on the full armor of God. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourself therefore unto God, and the devil will flee from you. Right? The, the Bible suggests that the devil can flee. The Bible is suggesting that you can put the sin down. Right? Th those things are important. Well, I, I would imagine that those are important things to know, <laughs> right? That those are important things to do is putting that sin down, man. It's loving the Father through Yahweh, right? By Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh Shah, by wave of Christ. Loving Abba, right? Loving Abba through what? Yahweh Shah. And, 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 and the more souls is going to be won for the kingdom, is the more we come out here and do this work. It's the more we promote new covenant, being in the fruits of the spirit, right? Bringing these things out through the spirit and power of the most High God, man. Gathering together, not forsaking a brotherhood, right? Not forsaking that brotherhood, man. Right, let me read that. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 25, 24. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So the Bible said, let us consider one another unto love and good things, good works. Not forsaking the assembly. The Bible says what? Hebrews chapter 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching. So as we see the day approaching, much more are we exhorting each other, man. Much more are we gonna be in this word of the most high God, man. Much more is the Most High God is going to keep pleading with his people, sending the prophets of the Lord out here that's going to really be teaching his word for what? People to stop sinning and keep the, keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, man. But if for no other reason, the Most High God sent a, a, a servant out here tonight for you to hear the word of God, Right? So when you walk in past, you can hear the word. Now, why I hear that? Because the Most High wants you to change. The Most High wants you to come out of wickedness. The Most High God wants you to stop sinning. Right? 
good should be preferred over darkness. But they go call the evil good. But they go, no, they go call the good evil. Right? And the evil good. Let's get that script. Right? Let's get these scripts, man. Because we're in the last days and that's what they're doing. Right? The Bible says it's going to be a feminine unto the word. Isaiah chapter 5 and 12. 20. Woe unto them. So the Bible is saying destruction unto them. Right? For what? They call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put the bitter, it's like it, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, man. That's what the Most High God is saying. Destruction unto the people of the earth that's going to continue walking in darkness. That's going to continue to walk around with a reprobate mindset, man. That's going to continue to walk around and not love the Most High God through the keeping of the commandments and the faith of this Christ, man. Who he sent to die for the nation of Israel and for us to be a light unto the people. Right? That's a serious thing out here. It's a serious thing when you see brothers lined up on them corners, man, teaching that word of the Most High God, man. Whether you believe it or not. You don't got to believe, man, for, uh, for, for these words to be true. Right? Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Just because you don't believe in a Bible, do that mean you're not going to get a swift judgment? Do that mean you're not going to get put to death? Right? No. Do that mean these prophecies in this Bible won't come to pass, man? Absolutely not. Right? For 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 God forbid. So no. Just because you don't believe, that don't make the word of God without effect. Let God be true. We're gonna let Yahweh by Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh shot be true tonight, right? Who the world calls Jesus Christ. We're going to let him be true. And what? Every man a liar. Right? Call Adam. Every man. Right? As it is written. Thou, sh thou may be justified in your what? What are you going to be justified in, man? In your sins, it might overcome when you judge. But if our unrighteousness command the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who take vengeance? And, and he says, I, he speak as a man saying that. Is God unrighteous for him taking vengeance? Absolutely not, man. Right? There is no unrighteousness to the Most High God. Hey. Hey. Is, is it, is it, is it, is it an unrighteous thing that the Most High God is going to judge the wicked? Absolutely not. Look at how the wicked, wicked is living, man. They live out after their own lust. The Most High God is saying, come repent, man. Stop sinning. Come on over. Come have a conversation. Come on, man. Come here. Come here. Come on, man. Come hear the word real quick, man. Give me, give me two minutes. Hear the most high, hear the word of the most high God, man. Coming out of that sin. We gotta stop sinning, man. That's why Christ died. Christ died so you can come out of your lower self and low life lively behavior. 
Christ died so you could stop sinning and elevate your mind for righteousness. Christ didn't die for you to continue to be out here shaking your funky ass, man. And for you to continue to be out here killing your brother. Lying, manipulating, pimping women, and fornicating. That's not why Christ died. There's no sacrifice for those actions. Christ, the, the, the sacrifice of Christ is, per, is unto perfection, not unto wickedness and folly. Right? Let's get that. This is Hebrews chapter uh, 10, verse 14, right? For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost is a witness unto us, right? So Christ died so we could stop sinning. Christ didn't die for you to continue to be out here shaking your funky ass, man. Christ didn't die for you to still be conniving, a fornicator, an adulterer, a thief, and a murderer, right? There, that, that's not the sacrifice of Christ. The sacrifice of Christ is coming out of sin. That's that, that, it, it, it says he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. It didn't say he gave a pass for you to do whatever the hell it is that you want to do. That's not the sacrifice of Christ. That's not what the Bible's teaching. Right? That's not what the Bible's teaching. That's not of the Lord. Uh, the Lord ain't behind that, man. The Lord ain't behind that, man. The Lord is looking for warriors, for true servants of the Most High God. Right? <laughs> Like they, this isn't hard, but they, it, hey, it ain't no condemnation to the elect, man. Let's get that. This is why the Most High God called the elect there. We got to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Christ. It's get down or lay down. You gonna keep the commandments or die? Go get destroyed, man. We got two options. We gonna follow God, keep the faith of Christ and the commandments, or follow the world and perish. Yeah, that, that, that's your option. No matter what you believe, it's what's going to happen. It's prophecy. It's prophesied. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. But wish and pray that you didn't hear this today. Because you're wicked as hell for no other reason. Right? Let's get that. This is, uh... Hold on, it's a lot here. Romans chapter 8, man. Uh-uh. Ain't no condemnation to the elect. A lot of people, oh, we 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 go get judged, man. We we gotta account for our sins. Yeah, if you're unrepentant, you have to account for your sins. If Christ died for you, why would you have to account for your sins if you don't sin? Right? If you're not sinning, you don't have to account for anything because it's been accounted for. Right? And this is why we got to be in this book. This is why we got to be in this Bible. This is why we have to start listening to God, going on fast, gathering together, coming out of sin. I'm so sick and tired of it, man. Hataf Kapash. Hataf Kapasha. Hataf Kapasha. Hataf Kapasha. Hataf Kapasha. Sin free. Sin free. Sin free, sin free, Hataf, 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 Kapasha, 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 man. Hataf, Kapasha. Right? We don't even know what the love of God is according to the Bible. The love of God is that we keep the commandments of God, man. And the faith of Jesus Christ. That's what the love of God is. That's what the love of God is, man. By keep keeping the commandments. Doing what God is saying do and not do. And keeping what he say do. And not breaking it. Having the law written on your heart, man. And we go get back to Galatians. 
through the spirit. Right? This is Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Which what, there is therefore no condemnation. Meaning that, nope. So there condemnation is destruction. If there's no condemnation, there's no destruction, right? Therefore, there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the Bible is saying there's no condemnation to those that walk not after the flesh. The flesh is enmity against God. The flesh is against God. If you walk after your natural state of mind, you're doomed. This is why the Bible suggests to be born again. Right? That's why the Bible suggests that. Uh, Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 3. For the law could not do, so like if for what the law could not do, and that was weak through the flesh. So the law was weak through the flesh, man. Right? So you can't follow after your natural state. You got to be born again. You believe in the Bible? You know, we got to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. That's how we show we believe. Right? That's how you believe in the Bible. It's by keeping the commandments of God and the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Yahweh Wah Baha Baha Yahweh Wah Baha Yahweh Wah Baha Shem Mashiach Yahushai. Salakia Salakia. It's the water for being patient. Right? The water Kayala Yawan. Right? Right? It says, for the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So Christ died that what? Romans 8 and 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So if the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us, what does that mean? It means you can walk after the, the fruits of the spirit. It means you can walk contrary to the flesh. Right? <clears throat> Verse 6. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh will do the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, you're going to do. Verse 6. Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the Bible is saying, if you don't keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, you're walking after death. Right? It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. God is saying you're against God if you don't do it. The Bible is saying, if you don't keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus Christ, you're against God. Right? You're, you're a hater of God. If you don't keep the commandments and the faith of Christ, that's what the Bible says, right? And, and there's a judgment for that, right? There's, there, there, there's a penalty for that, right? And I'd be a liar if I didn't bring it up, right? For the carnal mind is death, but the spiritual mind is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The Bible is saying you're you're the Bible is saying you're against God. Right? It says, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The Bible is saying if you don't keep the commandments, you're against God. You're not even subject to follow him if you don't keep the commandments or the faith of Jesus Christ. You make God a lie, you make you make the cross a lie, man. You, you ain't a believer in this book, man. You don't believe in a Bible. Right? If you believed in the Bible, you would know what the love of God was. What's the love of God? Do anybody know what the love of God is according to the Bible? Crickets. Right? Crickets. Yeah, because you're in the world, man. And God says, come out of the world or die. You got two options, right? You go get smoke, right? Then the guy go, the most high guy go roll your ass in the backwood, right? Or you go keep the commandments of the most high God, man. 
cool if I stay here until the Uber comes? Yeah, man. Go ahead, man. Hear the word of God, man. That, that's what we bringing out, man. Because look, to be carnally minded, the, the Bible say, man, if you ain't keeping the commandments and the faith of Christ, you're against God. Man. We're against the Most High God if we ain't trying to elevate our minds, if we ain't trying to elevate our conscious state. The saying right here, I'm about to read it. Right? Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded, so you got a, you got a natural way you, you, you born. Right? People say, I was born this way. All right, that's true. But that's right. why the Bible say be born again. So you could have been born again, right? Right, absolutely. Be born again. That's why the Bible suggests that. The Bible suggests that you can live a different way consciously because you're a spiritual being. You're not this body. You're not just flesh. You're actually a supernatural spiritual being that can turn your people going on. They can operate to Christ consciousness. The world fucked up. You live in a dark universe. Maybe I would you ever seen you ever play DC Universe or Marvel and got it? You know what a dark universe is? A dark right, right, right. a dark universe is when the world is fucked up and people act like it is. So how you how you substantiate your faith? Y'all believe in Christ in the Bible? That means we gotta keep the commandments and the faith and stop sinning. Right? Just because you say here yeah, don't mean you're a believer. Absolutely. Being a believer is saying, okay, God Actions. is saying, actually, God is saying do this, so let me apply it. You can't believe you're gonna get paid at work. You have to do what? The work. Right. Clock in. You have to perform or get fired. Same thing God said. Perform, do my word, or I'm gonna take my candlestick from you. Your light goes right there. So here we go, Romans 6 and 8. It says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It's giving you a balance immediately. You got life, you got that. What are we gonna do, right? Look what it says. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. So your natural state of being is enmity against God. It's immediately is bad, which is why you got a book called the commandments. You got the Torah, so you can do what God is saying do. It's like being a father to a child. We have parents, they told us what to do. They told us what to do, right? But for our what? Our well-being. Not because they wanted to be stiff asses and hard asses on us. They're telling us what to do so we can live a good damn life in America and not get our asses whooped out here, beat down, and, and run into all type of problems. Absolutely. That's well, what, my, what? Question, my, my main question is, even though I'm trying to do the right thing, I still have um, sure. my intrusive thoughts. Yeah. You know what I mean? They still try and take I got you. I got you. I got you. That's why... Uh, so we gotta have a full armor of God on. Even during prayer, because yep. I pray every night, but even during prayer, I still have I choose the thoughts trying to take over. I got you, I got you. I know you gotta go, so let me got No this worries, one. no worries. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, so look at what this says. So this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 10 and 5. It says, cast down thoughts and imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it to captivity every thought and the obedience of Christ. What was that Bible verse? Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. That's how. Let me uh, show you one more scripture before you go. Of course. This is Joshua. So you look. Joshua chapter 1 verse uh, 8. Look at what Joshua said. Good Joshua. Brother Joshua. Real quick. I'm on the way. I'm on the way. Alright, I'm on the way. I'll see you in a second. Yeah, this last verse. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. For the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. And you may, and you may, it's like it, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you shall, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have a good success. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's it. Pass the down thoughts and imaginations. Yeah. Knowing you can be I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you so I much. Yes, sir. Twice. Yes, sir. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, sir. I, I got you. I got you. That's what happened, man. Immediately when he came up, man.